Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD 2017 tutorial. In this video we're going to be considering rectangles and polygons. So we'll make a start, we'll open a new drawing. So select uh, templates, ACAD ISO named plot styles and we've got a new drawing. So what we'll do is we'll make a start by zooming all and we'll explain a little bit about limits in another video. But we're going to start off very simply with a rectangle, so we've got the option to select it up here from the ribbon, uh, or we can type in uh, REC uh, T down here, and that will give us the rectangle option. Uh, so that starts us off with a rectangle. So we can draw a rectangle in a number of ways. Uh, we can simply select two points, so we can select a point here and here, and we've got a rectangle. So that's the first way of doing it, very simply. Uh, another way that we could do it with a, a different level of accuracy, select rectangle, uh, select our first point, and then in the command line, you'll see we get some different options come up. So we've got area, dimensions, and rotation. So if we select the dimensions, we can tell AutoCAD how we big we want our rectangle to be. So if we want the length of our rectangle to be 60, type it in there and press enter or space for enter and then we want the width which is in this case is going to be 40 and then hit enter again and that will create our rectangle uh, in this position so that's our rectangle created nice and simply there so what we'll now do is create a rectangle using a slightly different method so again select the rectangle option we're going to specify a point down here and this time we're going to look at using the area option. So the area option here, we click on area uh, and then we tell it how big we want our area to be. So in this case, 2400. Now remember that the units at this point are set in millimeters and you do need to think very carefully when you specify areas in square millimeters. Uh, as if you try and convert from meters squared into millimeters squared, it's not quite as simple as uh, multiplying it by a thousand, you have to multiply it by a million. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Uh, so we've got 2400 square millimeters, hit enter. And then it asks us if we want to uh, calculate the dimensions based on the length or the width. Now we're currently set to length, as you can see here. Uh, if we wanted to change it to width, we could do so select width. And then we specify what the width of the triangle will be. Now this is the dimension from here to here going in the y direction so we'll keep that at 40 as it was on the previous rectangle hit enter you don't even need to type it in, in again because that's the default setting there now and we've got a rectangle you'll, now you'll notice it's exactly the same size as that one and that's because they share the same area so uh, we've specified this one by doing the length and the width and we've created this one by specifying the area and the width so two different ways uh, of producing rectangles there. Now uh, there is the fillet tool that we could use at this point if we wanted to uh, put a radius on the corners of our squares or we could use the chamfer tool if we wanted to put uh, a chamfer on there but what we're going to do is look at how to create a rectangle uh, by using these without having to use the additional command afterwards. So again if we select rectangle so we've got our rectangle option now and what we'll do is, uh, before we start this, if you look down here, we've got some options to begin with. We've got chamfer, elevation, fillet, thickness, and width. So in this case, uh, we'll go for chamfer. Uh, and we'll put a chamfer on here of 5 millimeters. So currently it's set to 0, which is why there's no chamfer there. So if we set our chamfer to 5 millimeters, uh, and the second chamfer distance. So bear in mind, again, we've got one chamfer, and two chamfers, if we keep them the same, five and five, then we'll end up with a 45 degree chamfer going across there. So now let's specify our first corner point and just create our rectangle as we did before. And you can see already that those chamfer points have been put in. Now if you make the rectangle smaller, uh, then it can accommodate the chamfer, uh, then the chamfers disappear and it, it's no longer an option. Uh, so they will just go away at that point. Uh, however, we can uh, simply uh, specify this in the way that we did before we can either click the mouse uh, or we can specify the area and dimensions so let's specify dimensions and let's go 60 again just hit enter because it's already set to 60 hit 40 because it's already set to 40 and we should end up with a nice 
uh, lovely rectangle like so. So there we go, that's our rectangle with uh, chamfers on there. Uh, if we now want to select a rectangle, this is the last rectangle that we'll do, we want to uh, put a fillet on here. So if we select fillet uh, and we tell uh, the uh, radius of the fillet we want to be 5, let's make it a little bit bigger, let's make it 10, hit enter. Uh, and then we want to again specify the corner point so we'll create it here and as you can see again if the rectangle is too small to accommodate the fillet or the radius uh, then they simply disappear uh, when the rectangle gets too small again we could do similar to what we did before select dimensions and specify 60 by 40 and there's our rectangle uh, with the fillet command already completed so that's quite handy to know that's quite useful so that's uh, a number of different things that we can do with rectangles uh, and of course this can be quite useful uh, when you're starting to create your basic models uh, before you've uh, edited them and cut them and trimmed them uh, more on those in a later video so now we're going to look at creating polygons so again we can either type the command in pol uh, brings up the polygon option or if you'd rather uh, you can select it from up here so there's the rectangle uh, command and if we drop down the arrow next to it it expands the polygon for us so we can select the polygon so we'll select the polygon now the first thing it asks you to do is to enter the number of sides so see down here enter number of sides at the minute it's set to four so that would produce uh, a square uh, but let's change it to a pentagon with five sides now at this point again we're being asked either to specify the center of the polygon much like when you produce a circle you select the center and tell it a radius. Uh, what we're going to do in this first example is we're going to uh, create the polygon by defining the edge. So you can either press E and then space or you can just select edge down there. So this is telling us to select the first end point of the edge. So we'll do that. Select the first point. We want it to be there. And then specify the second end point. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, just going to turn on ortho mode down here so that we're restricted to uh, 90 degree angles uh, and let's make the bottom line of this polygon let's make it uh, 35 mil long so that has created this polygon based on that edge there that I've created so that polygon is 35 millimeters along each side it is possible to adjust it from a regular polygon to an irregular polygon using uh, the grips uh, but again more on grips in a later video so that's how we create uh, a pentagon specifying the edge now let's have a look at creating uh, a polygon uh, and let's create a different one now let's create uh, a six-sided polygon so a hexagon now this time we're going to specify the center of it so I'm going to start it here uh, randomly so that's where our edge now once you've selected the center you've then got the option down here to make your polygon inscribed in a circle or circumscribed about a circle so what we'll do is we'll use this polygon as an example as to what that means before we draw the next one so let's look at first of all inscribed in circle so if we wanted to demonstrate this if we select uh, the circle if we want to draw a circle and down here I'm just going to turn on my geometric uh, oh snap make sure that's on so now we've got the geometric center uh, highlighted there of this shape. So if our circle was to be uh, inscribed uh, about uh, inside a circle, then it would be drawn like this. It would be defined by a circle where the corners of the pentagon touch the circle. So that would be uh, inscribed within a circle if we wanted to define uh, our polygon in a different way we could do it this this is circumscribed about a circle so if i snap this to uh, this point here let me just again on my o snap select midpoint let's see if that gives me that yep so this circle in the middle now uh, indicates what our polygon will look like if we inscribe our circle uh, sorry inscribe our polygon uh, about a circle so basically it's kind of to do with 
where you define the radius of your polygon to be. So this is inscribed within a circle. So basically the distance from the centre uh, to the uh, point where the uh, to the corner of the polygon, uh, and this one which is circumscribed about a circle uh, means that it's the distance from the centre to uh, perpendicular to the centre of uh, one of the uh, edges of the polygon. So that's that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, that's that's what those two options mean. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll demonstrate this. If I select my polygon, we're going to draw a hexagon. Uh, so that's fine. And we're going to specify the center here. And then at the minute, this is set to inscribed in circle. So inscribed in circle. So what we'll do is uh, we'll keep that. We're happy with that. So hit enter. And then specify the radius of the circle that this is inscribed within. So uh, if we look at this now, if I set this value here to 30, then we end up with uh, a hexagon that looks like this. Now if we measure uh, from the centre of the circle, uh, let me just turn off my uh, ortho, uh, ortho snap uh, and select there. If we measure from there to there, you can see the distance from there to there is 30 millimetres, which is the distance that we um, prescribed for this circle. So it's the distance from there to where the corners meet. Now to demonstrate the next polygon, again we'll use six sides, we'll specify the center, but this time we'll circumscribe it about a circle. So if we hit C and do it that way, can you see now the cursor is attached to the middle of the uh, edge of the polygon. So again, let's make this 30 again for the radius. And what you can see is that although we've set both of these to 30, this one is slightly bigger. Okay, And that's because here we've defined this polygon by the distance from the centre to the centre of one edge. So down here you can see that that is now 30 millimetres from here to here. So that's the way it works. That's inscribed within a circle. This is inscribed uh, about a circle. And actually, again, we can just illustrate this point a little bit more clearly. If I create a circle that fits around the outside of there. If I then move this circle so that I pick it up from the center here and put it there, you can see that it fits exactly uh, within there. So that's circumscribed about the circle. So it's using the same size circle to define the shape, but it's defining it in different ways uh, about the polygon. So that's what we're looking at with this. We've got rectangles uh, and we've got polygons. Uh, so I hope that this has made sense and been useful to you. As always, if you have any feedback or comments, please let me know. Uh, and I look forward to uh, telling you more on the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.